Hello and welcome to video 8 of Research Tools 2011. This video is Python Part 2, Running Python. In this video I'll be going through many of the ways that you can run Python. There are quite a few. And this will give you a sense of the diversity of ways that Python can be called. It might be a little confusing, so I recommend going through just taking a look and watching it, and then coming back through and trying to understand how each of them is different. Let's go ahead and get started. And I'm going to start by configuring my Emacs and my Bash RC. Now I've got open here um, a configuration file that's helping me out called uh, video8.org. This is just my notes for today. Now I've done a control X2 to split the, the buffer here, and I'm going to go ahead and edit my .bashrc file. And I'm going to go down to the bottom, and that's actually a, a meta and then a greater than. So I'm now at the bottom, and I control XO to jump over to buffers. And I really want to grab this little line here, so that was a control space, move down with the arrow, and then meta W to copy. Control XO to jump back over to the other window, and Control Y to yank. I'm going to go ahead and save that, Control X, Control S. We won't be using this one in this video, but this is a great time to dig in there and actually see it edit. Okay, so now the next thing that we're going to do to configure our setup is we're going to look at our .emacs file. So I'm going to go Control X O, Control X Control F to open a file, and .emacs. So I typed em, press tab, and there's emacs. There's currently nothing in my .emacs file. You may have stuff in here that you're adding to. And the first section that I'm going to add is right in here. So we'll copy this text. Make sure to not copy the pound plus end source begin source. So meta w copied, control x o, and yank. So let's see what we have here. In this section, we're telling Emacs that we really want to use org mode. So it's doing an org install, and then it's telling it which languages we would like to have it install for actually running scripts. The ones that we need for sure in this video are sh for bash and python for our python code. In here I also have some notes, you can add some more, so let's go ahead and grab a few more languages that might be useful to people down the road. So I'm going to copy this section, meta w, control x o, and we'll go right here after the python and we'll paste it right in there. So now we have our languages in there. Now none of this is running until we restart Emacs. We'll do control x o, and we want to make sure that we've got our Emacs server running all the time, so we want to be able to ask Emacs to go edit a file for us. So we'll do a meta w, copy this section, and paste it here with a control y. And in this section, we have this request here to not close the window after we're done editing a file. It gets a little confusing if things disappear quickly on us. And every time we start Emacs, we want to run this server that will listen for edit requests and take care of that for us. And we're also going to add some shortcuts to Emacs. So in here, we have some shortcuts for org mode. These are the recommended ones, so meta w, control x o, paste. These shortcuts are often used to handle things with org mode. We won't be using them in this video, but might as well put them in. And the ones that we will use, if we go down here and copy these shortcuts, meta w, control x o, these shortcuts are for the F1 and F2 keys on the top left of your keyboard. And this says control x, control g is go to line in case you actually want to jump to a line number explicitly. As you can see right here, the line number is actually written on the screen, so you could just scroll to the line. But if there's a big file, that could get difficult. Okay, so now I need to start restart my Emacs so let me go ahead and do that, since it tells me to do that. So we'll do a control X, control C, and Emacs is now gone. Go ahead and restart Emacs. And I'm going to shrink it up so it all fits on this video. Okay, and let's go set up our environment. If I do an ls-l, you can see that I have the video 8 file here. I want to actually make a subdirectory, so make dir video slash 8, and to be able to make multiple directories at the same time, I'll have to give it a dash p. So cd, we'll now cd into video slash 8, 
and we'll move to the slash video dash eight org dot. This way we have fewer things around and it will be a lot more hopefully easy to follow. So we'll now inside of our Emacs, we're going to go open that directory. So control X, control F and video tab. So VI tab eight and press enter. This is going to open the directory that we're in. So here we are in this directory and now I can just press return or enter on that line. It will open up the file for me. I'm going to use the tab key to collapse this down to an outline mode. So shift tab. It's now collapsed down to the top level headings so we can follow along a little better. Oops, control X1. And we'll drag this down so we can see a little more. So we've now restarted our .emacs and we're going to skip on to running Python. So there's lots and lots of ways we can run Python and we'll walk through some of these. First we're going to start off with some of our command line ways to do it. So in here we can just do the Python shell. So I hit tab on that to expand these and we can just type Python and press enter. So if I type Python, press enter, I am now on a Python shell and I can say one plus two, get the results, print hello world and we've done that. Now there's a couple different ways to exit out. You can press control D, which is sort of the end of a file representation or probably more clear here is to type exit in parentheses. And we're now back to our command line with bash. So that's that one. We'll hit tab. Now we'll go to the one liner with this. This is more of a Perl style type thing, but it works here too. So we can say print dash C says we're going to pass it a little bit of Python to run and we'll say print one plus two. So we put this in quotes and Python will now, oops, we will not type print, we'll type Python. Okay, so this looks good. We'll hit enter and we get back the number three. Not very exciting, but can be helpful. Okay, the next one is we can actually create a file and we can run that file from the command line. So if you just press control C, control C inside of here, you'll actually get this file created. So we'll do that. Control C, control C. It wants to evaluate this code type yes. And there was no results. That's okay. Let's take a look at this file. that's created called hello.py. So we'll do an ls dash L. We have a hello.py cat hello.py. So here we have just that in there and we can run that like this Python space and then our file name. So H E L and press tab and it runs. Hello. Works pretty well. Let's close that one up. And the script file part here is, is interesting. I'll, I'll walk through this bit by bit rather than actually run everything that's in there all at once. So we'll go ahead and we'll create a file like that in a second. But if we come here and we want to just try to run our hello.py like that, like it's a program that's any old uh, Linux or Unix program, this isn't going to work. It's going to t look at the first line and try to figure out what kind of script it is. And it's going to start off by assuming it's a bash script and uh, we get permission denied. And if we actually even had permissions, it would give us another error. So let's go create this file. So we'll say hello2.py. So that was a control X, control F. The first line tells bash that this is going to be a Python script. User bin env is a program that looks at the, the user's path to figure out where Python's going to be. That way they can actually control which Python if there's multiple Pythons around. In our case, we just have one. So in our script, we'll just say print hello world two. Not very interesting. We'll save it with control X, control S. And now we have a script on disk. We can do an ls l. And if you look right about here, there is no execute bits set. So we need to t tell this uh, system that we want to be able to run this. So chmod plus x is going to set the executable flag on this script. Hello 
2.py. And if we do an ls-l, you'll now see that there's x's through here, which means that the user can execute this, or anybody in the group can execute that, and anyone on the system can also execute this script. So now we can go ahead and run our hello2.py, and it prints out hello world2. This is the typical way that you would set up a script if you're going to give it to somebody and have them run it. All right, let's go into the fancier shell, IPython. And this is where, if you're developing stuff, you're more likely to spend your time. So we can type IPython. It looks a little bit different than the regular Python shell. And just like the regular Python shell, we can type whatever we want into it. And we can say 1 plus 2, and it will tell us that the answer is 3. We can also run a script. So if we do an ls-l and look for what's around, now note that a pound file is a backup file, so ignore those. And we can then say run hello.py, or we can actually even run, so I hit the up arrow to get the previous command, delete the .py, and it will run that. It doesn't need to know that there's a first line or not saying that this is Python, it just assumes that everything is Python. Okay, and we can also import a file so this assumes that this thing is what's called a module. So we can say import hello. And when it goes through that file, it will actually run any anything that's in there and set it up into our environment. And as a part of that, one of the commands was print hello. So cat hello.py says print hello world. Now let's try it again. We can hit the up arrow twice to go back to our old import command, press enter, and nothing happens. That's a little strange. But what's going on here is that Python realizes it's already imported hel the hello module, so it doesn't need to do anything else. In order to do that, we need to say reload, and you can either put the parentheses here or not, and IPython will correct you and add parentheses if they're missing. So we can say reload hello, and you see that it actually prints out hello world as it's reloading the module, and it tells us a little bit about that it reloaded this particular module. So that was our import. And that will work quite well. You can do a lot of work from there. We can do it from Emacs. So let's go ahead and create a file called video8, video, video 8py That was a control X, control F to open a file. And in there, we're going to put in this text in the middle. So I did a control space at the beginning and then meta w at the bottom and I'm pasting without the begin and end source. So let's save that, control x, control s, control x, control and that, and then just an o without the control jumps to the other window. So now that we've got that set up, we'll scroll down here to the run the whole file, control x, o, so in here, if we want to run the whole file, you can be anywhere and just type control C and then a second control C. And what happens is in this Python output buffer, it will write out everything that would go on here. So if we look here, the first line is print start my script. And we see that right here. Then we come down here, print more stuff. We see more stuff and we see the three plus eight come out here as 11. Control X and then a B is the switch buffer, and I'm lucky enough that my video buffer is the next one ready. So that was the whole file, and that works pretty well, but you don't always want to run the whole file, and part of that can be to just to select a small portion of code and run that. So let's Control X O, and let's pick a range of code. So what if we just want to run this line? So I did a Control space at the beginning, and then I moved down one line and I covered all the code I want to run. I can do a control X, excuse me, a control, control G is quit. So we'll do highlight the region, control C, and then the vertical bar or pipe character. And it will run just the lines that were highlighted. So let me do that again with a different region. So I'll do a control space right here with the print, move down, cover those two, 
and control C and then the vertical bar will run those two lines. In that way you can run any bit of code within a script if you're looking at it, assuming that that actually makes sense to do. If it's something like opening a file was done before that and you haven't run that, the file won't reopen. So it can get a little confusing sometimes. Let's close that up. Now we can also switch to a Python shell inside of Emacs. If we do a control C exclamation point, we are now inside of a shell and we can say 3 plus 9 or 8 is 11 and we can do whatever we want to print hello world 3 and there's our string getting printed out. So we have Python terminal. We'll do we can also go back up here to our video 8 and if we select a region of code and we run control C vertical bar to run a region, you'll see that it's actually using this shell to run that code and it makes a temporary file with a very strange name and goes off and runs that. So we can also run the whole thing, control C, control C, and it ran off, created another temporary file and ran our entire script from there. All right, let's take a look where we are. We can also use something called the compile command to run a script. So if we do meta x compile, but before I do that, I will expand that so you can see what I'm doing. So meta x compile is typically meant to compile C source code way back in the day, but it can be used for just about anything. If we get rid of this make dash k, which we don't care about, and we say python hello.py, it's going to look in the current directory and try to run this python dot uh, hello dot pi. So let's press enter and it ran off and we actually see a hello world right here. So that's very nice and there's an example of it in the notes. We can also run any script. It doesn't have to be uh, a python space and then a script name. So we can do meta x compile and we can also just replace that with dot slash hello to dot pi. And we'll actually run the script that had that first line that looks like pound bang user bin env python. So press enter and there's our hello world 2. All right, we'll keep scrolling down here. Now we also have an alias that we created with our dot emacs file. So if we do function f1 it actually brings up that compile command right away. You can't see me hit the keyboard, but that's what I did. And then you can rerun the script. That makes it really easy to, with one keystroke, just hit the F1 key and you'll rerun your script. It's great for when you're developing stuff quickly. Now let's see what happens if there's an error. We need to be able to have Emacs help us out with trouble spots. So I'm going to do Control X O, Control X B, and we are going to go to video 8.py, press enter. And let's put in a line that is definitely not right. Maybe we meant to put in single quotes for the string and print out nothing good, but this definitely is not going to work. I can do the F1 or meta x compile. Let me catch up in the notes. Or we can do a CC. So we'll do a control C, control C. And it says nothing good and it actually takes us to our error message right here. So we'll do that again. So our cursor is sitting right here on some other line. Control C, Control C, and it takes us right to, uh, should take us right to our trouble spot, but it's not. It's showing us up here in our terminal what's going on. So that's pretty nice being able to see the error message pop up. Now if we want to really see what's going on, let's kill this, yes, that was a control x k to kill that, and let's rerun this without that shell running around in the background, and we shift, let's give it a go again, and we'll do control c, control c, and this time without that shell running around, it popped up a nice little message up here, and it took us right to the line with the trouble, so I'm going to move the cursor right here to print, and we'll do control c, control c, run the whole script, and it says I'm actually jumping to line 6 and taking you right to where your error message is, at least as far as I can tell. Very nice if you're working with a long script and you have a bug somewhere in it, it will take you right to the trouble spot. OK, 
Okay, let's go check our notes. Okay, let's try that with the compile command. So F1 or meta x compile. So here's my compile. And we're going to go ahead and say Python video h.py. Press enter. And this is a nice thing when you're working inside of Emacs. If you've edited a file and it hasn't saved it, it will actually say, do you really want to keep running this without saving it? We want to save it. So yes, it's asking us to save. And we have an error message. It's a little bit more wordy. But if we look down here, it's actually saying where it is, just like before. And if we do meta x next error, and then we press enter, that takes us right to that error message. And we also have an alias for that, and that's the F2 key. So we can do that again. So F1 will run it. I pressed enter. Now if we do F2, it takes us right to the line where the trouble is. Pretty handy. And we'll keep scrolling down here and catch up. And now we're at the spot where we can actually run things from inside of Emacs itself. Control X1, so we just look at that. And I'm going to press tab to expand this out. And let's press Control C, Control C inside of an org mode source block. So the cursor just has to be in between these two begin and end sources. If we do Control C, Control C, it says, do you want to evaluate this code? Yes, we would like to. So type yes, press enter. And unfortunately, the results are none. Now this is a slight problem with the way that uh, org mode is set up with org babel for Python. You actually have to return the thing that you want printed. So in this case, we'll return the string hello org babel try to, and we'll get more into returns when we look into functions in an upcoming video. So do control C, control C inside of this, type yes, and your answer comes right back here. So if we then said, let's make another one, pound pound bang, or excuse me, pound plus begin source python. We'll say return 50 or 65 times 91 and pound plus end source. And we'll type control C, control C. We do want to evaluate that. Yep. And here comes our nice little math answer. So that way you can do sort of the repeatable research or reproducible research style of writing out what's going on. So here in this case I would write out a description of what I am doing and why. And then I would do the code and have the results and follow with discussion of why. So this is a nice um, why I got these results. So those are some of the ways that you can run Python. There's also Python embedded in a number of different places that you might run into. Those places include such as uh, ArcGIS or ArcInfo for those of us who are stuck with the old name in our heads and lots of different tools that embed Python inside of their their processing space. That's it for today. Thank you for joining and uh, look forward to more to come.